Yujin was persistent and steady, but he did not remain firm until the end. Chen Shu's appraisal of Yujin named him as one of the five elite generals throughout Tao Tao's military exploits. He was usually either in command of the vanguard or rearguard, depending if the army was attacking or retreating. He was also known for maintaining a high standard of discipline in his unit, and never kept the spoils of war for himself. This earned him a greater share of the rewards when they were handed out after the battles, but his harsh and unforgiving attitude towards enforcing the law made him unpopular with his men. He displayed exceptional talent for 30 years for Tao Tao, but surrendered to Guan Yu when he became surrounded at Fan Cheng. This contrasts the bravery of Pang De, who had only served Wei for four years before also being surrounded. The latter defied Guan Yu until his death, but both generals' actions were still mourned by Tao Tao. I've known Yu Jin for 30 years, yet the behaviour he displayed in the face of danger was no better than that of Pang De's. Pei Song Ji thought Yu was inclined towards killing, whilst being too harsh in suppressing dissent. Because he was unwilling to make an exception for an old friend whom he'd received a surrender from, Pei Song Ji felt that Yu Jin deserved his eventual fate, that is, ending up as a prisoner of war and receiving a negative sounding posthumous title of severe Marquis when he returned later to Tao Pei. Yu Jin was born in Taishan Commandery at an unknown date. He responded to the Han's call for volunteers when the yellow turbans rose up, then joined Bao Xin when he was rallying local forces to fight. Later, after Tao Tao arrived and took control over Yan province, Yu Jin and his volunteers were appointed as officers who led a hundred men each, then placed under the command of Wang Lang. Yu Jin's potential to become a great general was noticed by his superior, so he was sent to see Tao Tao for an interview. He was commissioned as a major, then sent in on the attack against Dao Xian, where he successfully conquered Guang Wei, then was promoted once more after the battle. He also performed well during the following battles against Lu Bu back in Yan province. He destroyed two of the enemy camps south of Puyang, while soldiers in his unit defeated Gao Ya at Xu Chang. He continued to capture three more of Lu Bu's camps, then also laid siege to Zhang Chao at Yongxu. After three months, the city was captured, which led to the ultimate execution of Zhang Chao and his family. In 196, some leftover yellow turbans under Liu Pi and Huang Xiao's leadership were being rooted out in Ban Ling. Ye Jin joined in the formation, but their camp came under attack during the night. He led his unit to counter the surprise attack, where they killed the rebel leaders and then captured the rest. His continued good performance led to Ye Jin receiving yet another promotion. In 197, Ye Jin also killed Xiao Rui and four other officers of Yuan Shu's at Ku County, before he accompanied Tao Tao on a campaign against Zhang Xu. Ye Jin's bravery was displayed at Wan Cheng when they were all fatally ambushed. The army was thrown into chaos as they scrambled for a retreat, but Ye Jin was the only one who continued to fight the pursuing enemy, whilst he also maintained an orderly withdrawal. At Yu River, Ye Jin showed peerless valour. A hero's success or failure is all a matter of circumstances. He forced the several hundred soldiers under his command to remain in formation, even as those around them were being killed or injured. His unit sustained many casualties, but they were able to stay together until Zhang Xiu's pursuit slowed down. With a chance to catch his breath, he reorganised his hard-working troops with the drums, then led them towards the rendezvous location at Wu Yin. They marched in a dignified manner, even though they had lost the battle, but they soon encountered a dozen injured and naked men on the road. When they explained what had happened to them, Ye Jin responded, The Xingzhu Corps are a part of Lord Tao's army. How dare they become robbers? He led his men to defeat them, but some escaped back to Tao Tao, where they accused Ye Jin of the very crimes they had committed. Tao Tao and Ye Jin clearly understood one another, when he arrived back at the camp, he immediately set up a defensive perimeter to protect his lord, even though he knew he had been framed. When he was urged to go and clear his name, he responded, If we don't set up defences now, how can we expect to hold them off? Lord Tao is intelligent and wise. Those accusations aren't a cause for concern. When the moat was deep enough and the fortifications were secure, he did eventually report back to Tao Tao, who granted him a Marquis title for his outstanding performance. How dangerous it was for me when we were defeated at the Yu River. General, you're able to bring order to chaos and hold your ground against a fierce enemy, and you display unwavering loyalty. Even the famous generals of ancient times couldn't have done better than you. Ye Jin also fought in the second attack against Zhang Xu, the capture of Lu Bu at Xia Pi, and went with Tao Ren and Shi Huan to defeat Sui Gu. Ye Jin volunteered to lead the vanguard against Yuan Shao's incoming army when it marched south towards Xu Chang. His bravery and courage was valued highly by his lord at that time, so he was given command of 2,000 infantry and cavalry, and stationed at Yan Ford. The main bulk of the Wei army was initially heading towards Guangdu, 
but they were sidetracked to Shu province, where they had to quickly deal with Liu Bei's uprising. Yu Jin was able to hold off Yuan Shao's attacks at Yan Ford until Tao Tao's army arrived. Before he rendezvoused with the main force, he led 5,000 infantry and cavalry alongside Yu Jin to attack the enemy camps on the Yellow River. They tore through and set fire to over 30 enemy camps, killed and captured thousands, and forced over 20 officers to surrender. Yu Jin then received new orders to station at Yuan Wu County, where he saw an opportunity to attack, then destroyed another enemy camp at Dushi Ford. After this, he was summoned back to Guangdu to receive further promotion. During the fighting around Guangdu, the enemy created man-made hills and constructed archer towers on top of them to rain arrows down on Tao Tao's camp. Yu Jin was then tasked with overseeing the troops digging up the ground to create defensive ramparts. The way troops sustained many casualties and many men became very afraid. Yu Jin, however, displayed great passion and intensity. He firmly defended his position, fought bravely and did not waver throughout the battle. When the Wei army emerged victorious, Yu Jin was promoted to Lieutenant General. In the coming years, Xi province was conquered by Tao Tao, but an old friend of Yu Jin's who had surrendered earlier named Chang Xi started a rebellion. Yu Jin was tasked with dealing with the uprising, but struggled to make progress at first. When Xi Hao Yuan arrived to assist, they rapidly advanced, overturning more than 10 rebel camps and soon completely surrounded Chang Xi, then received his surrender. Instead of sending him off to Tao Tao for punishment, Yu Jin told his men, Aren't you aware of the norms established by Lord Tao? He doesn't spare those who surrender after they are surrounded. I should follow his norms and uphold law and order. Chang Shi may be an old friend of mine, but I won't break the norms because of this. Tears poured from his face as he stood in supervision over Chang Shi's execution. The general betrayed his friend, but when Tao Tao heard of this, he remarked, Is it heaven's will that Chang Shi had his fate decided by Yu Jin instead of me? By surrendering to Yu Jin instead of me, Chang Shi had sealed his own fate. Yu Jin became even more respected by his lord after this incident, then was promoted to the General of Tiger's Might. He was then stationed at Ying Yin to protect the capital city. Zhu Ling was greatly disliked by Tao Tao, who wanted to strip him of power, but knew taking such actions could easily lead to a rebellion. He knew that Yu Jin had the ability to strike fear into the hearts of others, so ordered him to take control of Zhu Ling's unit. When he showed up at their camp with a dozen horsemen and took command, his intimidating presence froze Zhu Ling and the other soldiers who did not dare make a move. Zhu Ling became his subordinate, and all the men obediently submitted to his command. Two more rebellions broke out at Lu County during the Battle of Red Cliffs. Chen Lan and Mei Chang were attacked by two separate forces, one led by Yu Jin and Zhang Ba, and the other being led by Zhang Liao. Mei Chang and his 3,000 followers surrendered when Yu Jin and Zhang Ba showed up, but they rebelled again at the first chance they got, joining up with Chen Lan this time. By now, Zhang Liao was running low on supplies, so Yu Jin headed back to oversee the transportation to the front line. He straightened up the operation, which gave Zhang Liao the appropriate support to suppress the revolt and kill the rebel leaders. After this, Yu Jin was promoted to the General of the Left, and his Marquis state was increased to 1,200 households, then he was granted authority over the Imperial Army. In 219, Tao Ren was sent to Wan in preparation to launch a strike against Guan Yu, and Yu Jin was sent with seven armies to act as his support. The seven armies have hearts of fierce falcons. They look with such disdain upon Jing and Yi that they would conquer them with sweeping force. Continuous setbacks put the plans for the attack on hold. Not only was Han Zhong lost to Liu Bei, which stopped Tao Tao's momentum in the west, but Tao Ren's wanton policy of forced labour also caused a rebellion amongst the citizens of Wan. The armies feed their horses and have breakfast, while eagerly awaiting to go to battle, but thunder booms over the mountains. A heavy and bitter downpour, which lasted for more than 10 days, caused the Han River next to Fan Castle to burst its banks, which flooded the entire area. This devastated Yu Jin's seven armies, who were destroyed in the water damage. In a flurried panic, there was no time to regroup the troops. In the frenzy, over half of them were trampled to death. Yu Jin and the remnants of his army scaled to high positions to avoid death. His subordinate, Pang De, escaped atop a dam, but they all became trapped and isolated from one another. When looking around, everything was as vast as the sea. In the distance, a large ship carrying banners and drums approached. Guan Yu had taken this opportunity to go on the offensive, leading his naval troops to attack Wan in the autumn. The Meng Chong headed straight to the base of the embankment. When Guan Yu's marines fired arrows from their warships at the dam, Yu Jin surrendered without resistance and got tied up. Silent in shame, his face turned a deep yellow. 
Pang De donned his armour, armed himself with a bow and arrows, then returned fire at the enemy. Two of his colleagues also wanted to surrender, but he executed them on the spot. He later engaged Guan Yu in battle atop a hill and fired an arrow which hit his forehead, nearly killing the Shu general. Pang De often said he'd personally slay Guan Yu to prove his loyalty to the state, but he was eventually captured and executed when he refused to surrender. Ye Jin remained as a prisoner of war in Jing province until late 219, when Lu Meng's stealth mission led to the death of Guan Yu and Wu taking control over Jing. Ye Jin was released but brought back to Wu, where he was treated like a guest formally, but often ridiculed and humiliated by Ye Fan. One day, when Sun Quan was riding on horseback, he asked Ye Jin to ride side by side with him. When Ye Fan saw this, he shouted and wanted to hit Ye Jin with his horsewhip, but he was stopped by Chuan. Later, when they were all at a feast together aboard a ship, Ye Jin shed tears as he listened to the music. Ye Fan mocked him, are you pretending to be pitiful? When Tao Pi succeeded his father and became emperor, Sun Quan pledged allegiance to him and arranged to send Ye Jin back to Wei. Ye Fan objected and urged his master to execute him instead, but Sun Quan did not listen and became very unhappy with Ye Fan. On the day of Ye Jin's departure, Ye Fan told him, Don't think there are no great men in Wu. It's just that my advice wasn't heeded. Ye Jin returned to Wei in the autumn of 221, but by now he was a pale old man of grey hair, withered with exhaustion. He knelt down and cried when he met Tao Pi. His weeping and kowtowing was a pitiful sight to behold, but he received comfort from his new lord, who commissioned him as a general who stabilises distant lands. Despite being humiliated by Ye Fan for years, Ye Jin spoke highly of him to Tao Pi, who arranged a seat for him, even though he knew it would most likely remain empty. Ye Jin was sent back to Wu to act as Tao Pi's personal representative, but before he left, he was sent to visit Tao Tao's tomb at Gao Ling. He became filled with regret when he saw the illustrations of the Battle of Fan Cheng that Tao Pi had ordered to be painted. Ye Jin was depicted as surrendering to Guan Yu, whilst Pang De was portrayed in a ferocious and courageous manner. The sight of this deceitful and humiliating painting caused him to take his own life. Some say that the painting caused Ye Jin to become ill and that it sent him straight to the underworld. Although divine retribution is the will of the heavens, all heroic men still hold their reputations dear. Sima Guan commented that Tao Pi could have dismissed or killed Ye Jin, but instead he chose to insult and humiliate him. This act was not worthy of a sovereign. Sima Yi and Zhang Ji also commented on this. Ye Jin's defeat was due to the elements, not him. They were not lost in war. His army had been routed, so he could either surrender and save his men, or resist and certainly be destroyed. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.